Good evening. It's good to see everybody. Some of y'all may have noticed that um, uh, Weldon's not here. He's doing okay. Mindy's got some back problems, though, and hard for her to deal with his walker and, and what have you. Um, if you want to go ahead and open up your Bibles to Psalm 66. Psalm 66 is where our devotional time will be this evening. Let's see. 20 verses here. Psalm 66. It begins, Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies come cringing to you. All the earth worships you and sings praises to you. They sing praises to your name. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds toward the children of man. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the river on foot. There did we rejoice in him who rules by his might forever, whose eyes keep watch on the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard, who has kept our soul among the living and has not let our feet slip. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You had laid a crushing burden on our backs. You let men ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, yet you have brought us out to a place of abundance. I will come into your house with burnt offerings. I will perform my vows to you, that which my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. I will offer to you burnt offerings of fattened animals with the smoke of the sacrifice of rams. I will make an offering of bulls and goats. Come and hear all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for my soul. I cried to him with my mouth, and high praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But truly God has listened. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. You know, this particular psalm is a, is a hymn to the God of Israel, praising him for his gracious deliverance in times past. And for example, in verse 6, the psalmist recalls there uh, the exodus and that he turned the sea into dry land and they, they passed through the river on foot and he also acknowledges those points of trouble and turmoil in Israel's history that they passed through fire and, and water. But then in his grace, he brought them there in verse 12 into a land of abundance. Now, how true is that to the life of the faithful Christian? God brings us into a meaningful depth with him, not necessarily through ease, but through difficulty. Uh, we know from our study in James chapter 1, you, you look there in those opening verses, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the trying of your faith produces patience. We know that it's a refining process. It's to test our faith. It's to make us stronger. It's to, to build us up. And so he brings us through, not with ease much of the time, but with difficulty in tears and not smiles. Uh, uh, to kind of, that they put on this, this anvil, uh, this solid joy that we're to have in God. It's being, it's being hammered out. It's being fashioned. It's being built up. And we thank God. In, for, in fact, according to 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 18, we're to give thanks in all things. Not just the times when things are going well, but even in difficult times, we should praise God because he is working things out, again, to his benefit. But we thank God for the mountaintop experiences with him, but it's in the valley where we find him nearest and dearest to us. You think of Psalm 23, the psalm of the great shepherd, right? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. You know, God's down there in the valleys uh, with us. And we see here 
when we look at these verses, and he talks about praising God, there's something interesting that stands out to me, even more so than all of the others. Verse 13 and 14. I'll just read those again real quickly. I'll come into your house with burnt offerings. I will perform my vows to you. And then verse 14 especially. That which my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. How many times have we been in trouble and we've made a vow or a promise to God? And yet, when that trial is over, when that burden has been lifted, we neglect to say thanks. Say, you know, we don't even think about it sometimes. We're in trouble. There's things going wrong in our life. We pray to God for help. God delivers us or helps us. And then there's just this forgetfulness, right? It's almost like uh, the woman who's she's pregnant and she prays for these nine months. Uh, you know, I pray that uh, my baby will be well when they're born. I pray that they're healthy. I pray that they're a good weight. I pray that they're loved. And then when the baby's born, thanks God, I've got it from here. Just that type of attitude and that, that mindset. And so uh, the question that I have for us, are you in a valley now? At some point, at some way in your life, do you feel that you're, you're fighting your way through fire and through water like they did? It could be emotional, relationship, parental, marital, financial, physically. I mean, there's really, there's no pat answer to, to it. There's no quick formula. But we can take comfort in Psalm 66 through tears he brings us, what's it say there? In verse 12, to a place of abundance. Through those, through those tears. Now, you might think about those tears. And when you do, when you're, when you're sitting there and you're crying either in emotional pain or physical pain and you're thinking that, that God's not hearing you, you might think of Psalm 56 in verse 8. Psalm 56 and verse 8 says, You keep track of all of my sorrows. You have collected my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. God knows every single pain that we're going through. Every tear that we shed is recorded in heaven. He is aware of the burdens that we have and it's through that and through a strengthening of faith and a refining process that he wants to bring us to a place of abundance. And obviously, I am not talking about the abundance that this world has to offer. But a place of true joy and contentment. That was the pattern for Christ's own life through the suffering and tears of Gethsemane into the, the place of abundance and the reigning resurrection. If, if our Savior, if our Savior walked this path, then we should not be averse to following it. John 16 and verse 33, he said, in this world, you will have problems. You will have problems. You will have financial problems, mental problems, emotional problems, relational problems. You will have problems. But he says, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And if we were to look at, at Matthew 11, verses 29 through 30, he says, take my yoke upon you in the beginning of that verse. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Learn who I am. Learn how I handled things. Learn how I dealt with things, with, with taking time to not only be with God's people, but taking time alone to be with God, to be with the Father, to pray for those people esteeming others more than ourselves we're told first corinthians 11 1 and 2 paul writes imitate me as i imitate christ we look at this uh, this psalm and there is an acknowledgement of the difficulties in the past 
But more than an acknowledgement of the difficulties, there is the understanding and appreciation, the remembrance of God carrying them through those difficulties. You know, once the people were freed from Egyptian bondage, there were several times that they cried out, man, things were just better in Egypt. It, it was better to die in Egypt than to come out here in the woods and starve to death. What were you thinking? They were a rebellious people when they left Egypt. The people, they stand there at the cusp of the Red Sea and they look back and they see Pharaoh and the chariots and the soldiers and they're all freaking out for lack of a better word. Just wondering, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? You're not going to do anything. God is. And I believe it's Exodus 12 and verse 12. You can look it up and correct me afterwards. But it says that the Lord will fight for you. You, you keep your peace. It says that the Lord is a man of war. He will battle for us if we remain faithful. And by remaining faithful, I mean studying the Word of God, walking in the Spirit, bearing the fruits of the Spirit. I mean praying to God. I mean being a, an, a genuine, authentic Christian, not just one in name only. And I'm sure that each one of us can look back at at least one point in, in our lives and say, you know what, I didn't know how I was going to get through it. I don't know how I was going to accomplish it. And when we really look and examine, we could see where God stepped in. It might be that God stepped in through people. Rachel and I, we have been very blessed to be here at, at Freetown. And people have stepped in. Godly people have stepped in and helped us when we needed it. And I'm very appreciative for that. There are definite moments in my life, and I'm sure that we all have them. As you go through this week... And you're looking at the troubles that you're facing. Outside of praying and looking to God's word, think back to other troubled times in your life when God saw you through. And praise him for it. You say, you know what? You got me through there. You'll get, you got me through that. You'll get me through this. There is nothing that I need to worry about in this world. The world has already been defeated. It just doesn't know it yet. And if there is anything at all that I can do to help, whether it's praying with you, maybe, maybe you want to set up a Bible study and, and we can do that together, or if there's anything that your brothers and sisters here can do to help, we'd be happy to. And if you'd like to make that known publicly, then you can do so by coming forward as we stand and as we sing.